Okay, hi, this is Elia Fishman, and welcome to uh, CTS Us Facebook Live. And this is uh, near the end of the year. Yesterday was Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. And today's the 26th, and though there is five more days till the year, New Year's is not till next um, Wednesday. We will be making this our last Facebook Live since we do it on Thursdays, and the next Facebook Live will be in the new year, it'll be January 2nd, so it'll be exciting, we'll get started. You can see behind me here, it's uh, our CTSS uh, ball, let me move it this way, you see, see you in 2020 from all the guys here. So uh, I also, for a special occasion, I wore gray Lacoste, not my black Lacoste as always, so that's a change for today. And for the title today, we have this thing, and uh, Lily gave it to me, looking back at the 2010s, and I think, you know, it's interesting that uh, we talk about the new year, so it's not that big a deal. You know, it's always it's always a big deal, but it's the next year. But you realize we're ending a decade from 2010 to 2019. It was a decade that many things happened that changed all of our lives. It's unbelievable to think that it will be a 2020, which is 20 years from the 2000. I remember the 2000, and so do most of you, the 2000. New Year's, remember, we were afraid the power grid would fail. We fa were afraid that all the computers would fail. We were afraid that everything would fail. They told you to get water and power and food and everything else because who knows what would happen to the grid. And, in fact, this was one of the big sellers. I still have it, my Y2K bug. It's a very nice bug, you see. And it says here, Y2K bug, the year 2000 bug has its web hold, a time bomb of confusion, as many foretold. And so, believe it or not, I still have my 20-year-old web bug with the tags on it, probably worth at least 7 or $8. But it does make the point that uh, it's amazing how far we've come. And think about the web and Facebook and Google and Amazon. Those companies weren't even companies when the Y2K bug we were afraid of. It was the way back when. Amazing the changes we've seen. And we see changes all the time. Like, you know, I showed you this before. I got this when I was at Pixar. Uh, Ed Catmull retired this year after 40 years at Pixar. Amazing. But if you go to Pixar and they let you in, you can buy this ball. And my kids have one, grandkids. It's a Pixar studio store in Emeryville. And this year, I was, just two weeks ago, I was in Orlando. And look what they sell. This giant coffee cup, a Pixar coffee cup. There's also the counts in there. And that's for my guys because... In this decade, I got uh, Max and Sam, so that's a major, major, major addition. But you can see, so everything changes, but it stays the same. Still got the amazing Pixar logo from Luxo Jr., but now we have it in a cup, not just a ball, but we can put the ball in the cup to show the continuity. Anyway, uh, it, it's interesting, uh, CT is Us now is 20 years old. Uh, it's amazing how much it's changed. We had the big redo in 2011, and uh, I think the website really looks spectacular, and Sarah has done an amazing job, and Lily and Hannah building out, and we continue to improve, and hopefully by the next decade, it's even going to be better. It'll be interesting to see whether we still have desktops or everything will be on phone, or maybe there won't be any phones or iPads. Everything will be uh, by telepathy that you will have satellites, you know, Apple's working on satellites, which will beam directly to your glasses or to a, a electrode implanted in your brain. So it's hard to predict because probably most of us would never have predicted what's occurred in the last 10 years, whether it's in politics or it's the uh, cars, whether it's the Tesla, whether it's the emergence of Amazon, whether it's the amazingness of Apple or the amazingness of uh, many, many things, many, many things like Alphabet or Google, all of those things become very critical. We talk about um, the 3D imaging, we talk about CT, now we have lower dose better than ever. We have thinner sections, better resolution, better detectability. Talk about 3D imaging, the cinematic. We talk about the growth of CT, the influence of CT in all of medicine. We talk about radiology, we talk about AI. Going back a decade, we spoke a little bit. We were doing some work on, uh, you know, having computers recognize lung nodules or things like that. Never very successful. Now we're talking about computers reading the films, 
helping with error. We talk about the Felix Project. The only thing I knew about Felix 10 years ago was Felix the Cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat, you know, with Office of Dooley or something like that. Now Felix means detection of pancreatic cancer early and the ability for early detection, better management are all things we're working very hard on. Uh, things like the Lust Garden Foundation and everything they're doing is something in the last decade. We we'll talk about that. I look also at this piece of paper talking about things like Facebook. We've been on Facebook for a decade, but things like Facebook Live didn't exist. We remember when the greatest thing in the world was vodcasts, which we still do. Uh, I recorded a series of vodcasts today on the liver, which will be out by the end of January and early February, three parts. Uh, we talk about the ability for education. We talk about connectivity. We talk about the fact that CTS Us is seen in over 200 countries. Um, I don't know most of the people in those countries, and they don't know me, but they follow us. They listen to our lectures, look at our cases, and the ability to uh, spread information across boundaries is very important, and the ability to do this in a very low-cost fashion, which is one of the real uh, pluses of the web, the ability for information, regardless of the specialty, for information to get everywhere. Of course, the danger is information can be corrupted. We talk about false news and fake news and inappropriate news. So with every gain, there is the potential. And we try not to focus on the downside of things. Remember, uh, medical records are incredible, electronic medical records. They're not perfect, but we're not going through charts and patients' charts are missing. But then you worry about uh, the information getting into the wrong hands, whether it's insurance companies or the public. The fact that people are pursuing to try to break in to hospitals and clinics and create ransomware, all those things are really terrible. Probably no need for them, but I hate to tell you, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. You're going to see lots of stuff related to the 2020 election, and whether you're a Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. But just the fact that everyone wants to make certain that the election goes with the will of the people and not the will of some people pulling the strings or misinformation. This whole era of misinformation, I think this false news and misinformation and security and cybersecurity are going to be a hot topic. They have been, but I think from 2020 on, they're even going to be hotter. I think everything revolves around them. Um, we're getting, now there's a couple of questions, and this is a good time to ask questions as well. You, Scott, getting the radiology order authorized will be a greater challenge. Health cost and affordability is at a crisis point. And I think all of us do agree, and that's why you're seeing the groups getting bigger because they're looking at ways of cutting costs. You're going to see in this decade massive new changes in medicine. And I'm not talking about some new drug from Pfizer or some new scanner from Siemens or something new from GE. I'm talking about Amazon, and I'm talking about Apple, and I'm talking about Google, and I'm talking about Microsoft, and I'm talking about NVIDIA. Those are the companies that are making changes that will impact medicine, whether it's developing new ways of seeing patients, whether it's new ways of putting clinics into things like Walgreens, whether you're going to see Walgreens or Amazon not only delivering packages, but doing CT and delivering your results. 23andMe, the growth of things like liquid biopsies, the growth of the discoveries of Bert Vogelstein and people like that are going to impact tremendously how we practice medicine. But the cost structure becomes critical. We can't keep going up in costs. You can't have drugs that cost a million dollars. And I think it's the people like the Amazons and the Apples of the world that really don't have the uh, process in place, always worrying about what was. They're just doing stuff that's new. They don't have this the history behind them, which is history is wonderful, but at times it can be a burden. I think uh, if you're paying attention to the news, there's a great article this week in Business Week on Boeing. Boeing was one of the great American companies, still is, but this whole thing with the 737 MAX is an embarrassment. It's killed lives. How does that happen? Well, when you start reading about it, it really revolved around cost cutting, making things more efficient. Uh, putting training centers different places, not having the central cohesion, not having the constant learning, not having the constant feedback, not willing to accept zero tolerance for any problems. And people became a little bit too worried about, and you see in the article, 
They worry more and more about the profits than about anything else. And I'm just fixing my hair here. It looks kind of weird and I made it look worse. You can't fix your hair on these things on the monitor. Um, because of profits, they kind of changed everything. And now the company fired the CEO, which is just a small thing, right? Because it's not like he was the one who did all the things wrong. But it, it is a way of thinking, and it's a good lesson for all of us, whether you're in healthcare or finance or uh, computing, whatever it is, you can't rely on your history that only carries you so far. You have to be careful if you're only worried about cost, if everything is making a profit, and you make the sacrifices and you look the other way because it's more cost effective, it will catch up with you in time. You will get burnt and you may be destroyed. And I'm sure Boeing will not be destroyed, but it will never be the same. It's reliability, it's perception, it's employees. Everybody's gonna pay a price. Now, I think in the end of the day, you may not remember this a few years from now. They will make things better, they will make things well, but it just is a lesson for Boeing, it's a lesson for all of us, in that if you're only worried about cutting costs, if you're only worried about maximizing profits, that can help you very short term, but longer term, and this was only a few years longer, it will come back to haunt you because you will end up having cut corners and you will make a mistake that should never have happened. And I think that's the lesson. And there'll be many books about Boeing. There'll be many books about the people who complained about all the processes. And Firing a CEO is a thing you do. That doesn't change anything, right? It's not the CEO who made all the decisions, not the CEO who runs the company. It's kind of like Steve Jobs was incredible, but you know, Apple had 150,000 other employees who were pretty incredible as well. Steve might have been that North Star, but there were many people who were North Stars and many people who were leaders. And so you, we always tend to give too much credit to the person on top and give too much blame. So there's something in between. Uh, and for us, I think, and again, it comes back, it's a good lesson. Um, you wanna learn lessons to learn them before you make a mistake, not after. It's easy after the fact. So uh, the Boeing thing, Business Week is for free online for a certain number of articles. I would just go there, it's this week's issue. It's really a good lesson. Um, and again, it's retrospective many of the people and they talk about things and it's easy to be smart in retrospect but uh, we, we can all learn something so let's see what else um uh, any other questions anybody might have besides you scott and if you scott has another question i'll be happy to answer his question as well um i think it, i could at this point also say that for ct is us if whether it's the website the facebook the instagram anything else uh you have any ideas, suggestions, things we should do, things we shouldn't do, let us know. We're trying to make things better all the time. We're trying to, we'll have a lot of new lectures this year. I know I'm looking at the board. The first three talks will be Pam Johnson speaking about pulmonary emboli. Then the next three is myself speaking about parenchymal liver disease. And then I think I'm, I'm recording again today, but I can't remember what I'm recording. But you'll see a lot of new lectures, a lot of interesting content. Uh, so I, I, we're excited about that. But again, if people have suggestions and thoughts of what they would like to see, what we've not done enough of, what we've done too much of, let us know. We will be keeping you informed on AI. Remember on the CTSS website, there's an AI section that won the Cum Laude Award at RSNA. It's really good. It changes almost on a daily basis. There's a lot of things to read. We make the website for radiologists and technologists. We're not making it for computer scientists. So everything we try to fit in there, we connect other fields into radiology and the whole idea of AI and its impact cannot be overestimated. It is gonna change everything. And it's my opinion that if you read about it and you know about it and you see what others are doing and how they're doing it successfully or unsuccessfully, you will learn a lot. So that part is indeed very exciting and we will continue to build and rebuild that site over the coming year on nearly what seems to be a daily basis. So if there's no more questions, I, I'll take this opportunity on behalf of everybody here to thank you for your loyalty. Uh, you know, there's many ways of measuring things. One way is likes, which is not a great thing, but it's the best thing you can do on Facebook. 
And we have more likes than the ACR, the RSNA, and the Rankin Ray combined, which is pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. And we thank you for your confidence in us. And we look forward to, again, doing better than ever. Our goal is always to move forward, always to think of ways of delivering information and knowledge in a way that you'll see uh, and enjoy. So with that, let me wish everybody a happy and healthy 2020. Wherever you are in the 225 countries that look at CT as us, or even the other few countries that don't, whether you're whatever religion you are, whether you celebrate uh, the new year or you don't, have a happy and healthy coming year. And we wish you only the best. And we'll see you next year. So with that, let me sign off and say bye-bye.